everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Rudy, for giving me the opportunity to show a little bit of the work that many, many people contributed to. Uh, I'm here representing really a large group of very smart people that work uh, on the background of the development of uh, Smart R. So for me, the, that's an honor. Um, and it's also very interesting to be in the UCSD, so thank you for those that made it possible to, to gather this community here. So being part of the group for the last four meetings, it's really nice to come to the meeting and see like all my colleagues and for sure future colleagues here that we uh, can work together uh, for releases like Smart R on the future uh, uh, versions of uh, Transmart to be released in the future. So like I said, uh, it's a lot of people working on uh, this project, right? And we have many, many uh, interesting features that were not present before on the Transmart uh, platform, right? And the Smart R is basically, if you ask me, what is this? Uh, it's not only me, but all, all my colleagues would say it's, uh, it's about a cool visualization technique uh, to perform analytics on Transmart, right? You have lots of uh, visualization methods that were included in this release version that they were not available before and things that many, many people used to uh, wish in the past and that now it's possible to, to use and to go through. And everything is about a dynamic uh, interaction with the system, as you can see in the example picture here of the heat map on box plots or the correlation analysis or future uh, characteristics to be released in the platform, as we saw in the talk of Larry Smar. Uh, longitudinal data is very important for what we are doing here in terms of translational research. Something's going on. Okay. Um, it's better now. Some edu room problems here. I'm not trying to connect to anyone. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, so that's uh, features that will be made available in the future, right? But as I said, um, it's a lot of new features that um, were used to make the smart R possible. You can see here that uh, in, in principle, you have the integration of the GRAIUS right, framework with the database where the data is loaded for Transmart. And you have all the statistics methods that are run in the R uh, behind the server side. So on the other side, you have the framework of Angularis that will provide you a very, very modern and very interesting layout for the Transmart built with the basic, you know, um, technology used in the web development like HTML5 or uh, JavaScript or CSS. And of course, all these interesting visualization graphs, they are plotted using the latest technology uh, made available by D3. So it's a big effort that uh, makes this uh, possible, right? So what's new, right? If you check what's made uh, available for this last release of the platform, you have basically the uh, direct integration of the uh, platform 16.2 with the Atrix version 3. So uh, there is no, it's not necessary to have a dedicated setup for these features to work. There is a very um, um, interesting stabilization of the whole framework that was used for the development of the tool. So uh, you have more than 150 features that have been added to the analytical methods of uh, Smart R. And there is a lot of improvement in the platform, several bug fixes, and a new back end provided by the teams of Sanofi and The Hive, right? And you have like uh, improved um, usage of the core API of the tool, and also uh, the modularization of the R scripts that are part of the platform. Uh, you have also a new front end, in which uh, these workflow elements, they are very easy to be reusable uh, as components. And also, um, there is more features, um, and this is still uh, accessible for new developers that are interested to contribute to the Smart R software. So as I said, uh, Smart R is a dynamic software, and it would, it would be very uh, bad to show these static figures there. So I'm going to switch here very uh, briefly to some um, videos. And I think this is going to make it easy for you to follow what I'm saying about the Smart R. Okay, one second, turn your audio on for the computer. Uh, okay, it's... Uh, all right. Uh, it, it's not necessary, but thank you. <laughs> cool. So here you have like an example of the box plot workflow on the Smart R 
basically, right, you have to select the cohorts for comparison. So you are comparing two groups here of uh, live and dead features. <clears throat> and then you can, for this subgroup of comparison, you can select the variables that you want to plot, right? And you are choosing, in this case, uh, the multidimensional data for breast cancer and one specific biomarker. And this biomarker is the gene MK1, right? And you can add to your plot a specific um, numerical variables such as age or that's the survival time, right? Once that the system is launched, it fetches the data from the database. Takes a little while, as everybody knows here. <laughs> And then you run the analysis, right? And the interesting thing here now is that you have like uh, these very uh, comprehensive plots, the box plots, in which you can see uh, the common statistical measures that are represented in the box plot here, right? And from now on, this is what's interesting on the smart R. You can make everything on the fly, right? You can select the features, you can recompute your data on the screen, you don't need to fetch any type of data anymore to do uh, this analysis. It's everything uh, already made available on the interface of uh, Transmart. So you can select the box plots that you want to see in between the comparison groups. You can um, add or exclude uh, specific points uh, from uh, the graph. So you can have a very interesting uh, user experience when you are having uh, um, these platforms being used for smart R, right? Uh, a second example would be the correlation analysis. So again, you select your groups and you can realize that this is very fast in comparison to what you use it to do before for this, uh, this sort of analysis, right? Here you select your groups again And in this case, I'm using the demographic variable, age, compared with the uh, survival time as numerical values. I fetch the data and the random analysis again. And it will show me whether there is a correlation in between these two variables on the dynamic graph that's plotted in the next step of the analysis, right? So once um, the data is uh, queried from the database, you can, of course, come back to the tree and select new variables, for example, categorical variables that will make part of the uh, plot at the end. So you fetch the data and you run it again. So and now you have the box plot. However, it's possible to navigate per categorical analysis here and see what are uh, the variables that would be interesting, interestingly linked to this correlation observed in between the two different variables that you have uh, in, in the plot. So you can select specific parts of the plot to, compone, uh, to compose your correlation analysis. You can zoom in these features. You can exclude or you can just reset to a specific, uh, to, to the initial value, right? So it's a very dynamic platform that you can, uh, you know, you uh, use uh, right now. So um, another example would be the uh, dynamic heat map that for many people it's the richest improvement that was uh, executed here on, on the platform. So again, you have to select the uh, numerical variables that you want to include. You compare, sorry, the subsets, right? You compare the subsets. And then, of course, you need to select, as before, the um, high dimensional data. In this case, the gene expression data for breast, for breast. You can add some numerical variables to it. And in this case, I have age and survival time being added to my uh, heat map. And as a categorical value as well, I can put, for example, the um, node stages for the cancer that I'm studying. So you ask the system again to fetch the data. You blink a little bit.
And then when it's ready, you have a bit of summary of what is happening. And basically you run the analysis for the heat map to be um, calculated. Takes a while, and then you can see here the very uh, interactive heat map for the cohorts comparison that you selected before. So you have the top 100 differentially expressed genes in absolute values on this uh, left column here. You have the probes marked on this side of the column. You have the samples in the top. And uh, of course, you have added here in the top the characteristics that were filtered for the additional numeric or categorical values that you added to the plot. So then, of course, you can, to facilitate your analysis of this uh, uh, heat map, you can sort the data as you like. So there is like very uh, interesting um, methods for sorting the probes that we're observing here, this person, the expression level. And here, of course, you can plot a dendrogram that would uh, show you the, uh, the relatedness in between these uh, expression levels for the individual probes. It's a little step, as you can see. So you can set up specific links for outside of the platform. So here I'm showing you the BioCompendium website, in which for every specific uh, context, you can add uh, extra information, for example, from CAG database that would bring, um, um, would enrich the data that's being displayed here on, on, on your screen. So here I am changing the type of expression that's observed on this side here. So in case I'm looking for variance or the coefficient of expression, in this case, the, uh, so I'm changing the color schema of the two. And finally, I can observe here on the top whether the samples they have or not uh, a correlation in terms of gene expression. So how distant they are from each other by analyzing my dendrogram on the top. So these are all uh, features that are available in the uh, heat map um, method or workflow of uh, SmartR. And that's also integrated on the 16.2 platform. So what I'm doing here again that many people is interesting to do is to select a specific uh, probes from my heat map and then recalculate my uh, heat map based only on those information that I selected before. So everything is very dynamic and much faster as in comparison to what you could do before, right, with the tool. So if you click on one uh, specific uh, genes, you can just navigate out of the system. And you can go, for example, for the EBI search and see what is the description of that gene that we're looking at in the Transmart or, of course, for the ANA archive in which uh, extra information will be made available for that gene. And I think that's it for um, the things that are already ready and available for um, SmartR. And I'm talking a little bit about the future now. So I'm trying to make a prediction about what's going to happen. <laughs> and I think that this is related to the line plot. So I'm, comparing, I'm interested now to see longitudinal data on smart R. And basically, I'm selecting here uh, different genders, so male against uh, female, and asking the smart R method uh, linear graph workflow to plot for me different biomarkers. There is one uh, numerical variable, uh, variable there. There is the uh, mRNA expression level as well added to the uh, analysis and the protein expression level. So these are just dummy data to show you the, um, the tool and what's going to come up in the future for the, the next releases of the, uh, the platform. It's not yet uh, finished. So again, the system fetches the information you want to see from the database. And then you plot what you see 
right, on the sort of data. So it takes a little while, but then afterwards, you come up with the uh, longitudinal uh, linear graph to export these three variables that you selected before. The biomarker one levels, the mRNA uh, levels, and the protein levels as well. And as the other features, it's also very interactive that will permit you to navigate into the uh, description uh, of every data point. And also, if you are interested, you can here shuffle the variables that they are displayed for a specific data uh, point here on the longitudinal uh, axis that you can see here in the bottom. So I think that uh, Larry would be very interested to see this uh, feature on Transmart, once that he's following his own characteristics since uh, quite a while already, right? So I think that this is uh, where Smart R is going now, and it's near completion, and in the future it's going to be also added for the stable, uh, really, uh, stable releases of Transmart. So it's very intuitive, and I think everybody wishes to see features like that uh, included in the tool, right? So, and uh, with that, second, it's just like a you know escape slide in case it doesn't work. <laughs> And then, uh, as I said in the very beginning, I'm here representing a lot of people that worked in this uh, development, right? And basically, several friends and colleagues uh, back in Luxembourg in the LCSB. Uh, a lot of people uh, within the Atrix community, many people in Sanofi, The Hive, and ITTM, and of course, everybody that helped the Transmart community to create at least one line of code and one functionality of this uh, tool, or those that they worked to fix uh, to fix it, uh, to identify the errors and mistakes and report it back to the community and make the community able to release such a magnificent piece of tool for Transmart. Thank you for your attention. If we have any questions, we can take one or two now or else we'll wait for a post level panel discussion yeah. at the end. I uh, just wanted to add that there is a poster being presented outside, oh, right. so many people here. I would like, I mean, maybe it's just to take the opportunity, who here wrote at least one code for Smart R? I think they should be represented there. You, you, a little bit, at least one piece of code, so there is many people here, of course. Yeah. So just for you to identify the people that deserve credits on this room as well, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs>